Hello, 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 everyone. Lisa's back. Thank you all for tuning in to Finding Peace of Men Ministries. I know there are so many other podcasts out here that you could be listening to, but you chose Finding Peace of Men. We have a great show today. Um, I'm going to talk about suffering in silence. Five reasons why you should not be suffering in silence. Now that we have found love and um, we try, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with this new love that we found of ourselves now that we've gone through our deliverance and we realize how important we are to ourselves, not just to ourselves, but to those who we love, what do we need to do to stay whole? That's what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into the podcast, I want to thank you all for listening to the podcast. And I am also now recording the podcast live on video. So it's on my YouTube channel. You can go there, find a piece within. Or just put my name in, Lisa L. Dalton, and it will come up as well. And I want to wish myself a happy birthday. Yes, November 4th. My birthday is um, coming in three days. I will be 57, and I thank the Lord for allowing me to see 57. Um, yeah, I, I freak myself out sometimes when I think that I will be 57, but thank the Lord for that. Also, my book is available. My new book, Today's Investment, Tomorrow's Return, is available on ooh, is on available on Amazon. Nook, uh, Barnes and Noble is in paperback and electronic. So if you don't like to read and you like to listen, it's available there. Um, as I always like to do, let's get started with a short word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We honor you and we praise your name, oh God. We just thank you for your love and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for everything that you've done. Um, in our lives, Lord, we ask that you be with me as I um, give this word and we study the word of God and the things that we need to do in order to remain free and let us realize how important it is to have a circle, not just you, but humans, because you work through people, how important it is for us to have someone to talk to when we are still struggling and trying to live this peaceful life in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Now let's go to our study. So we've gone through our deliverance process and I shared uh, last week on how to walk in spiritual maturity, how to study the word of God and remain there as the Lord continued to uh to peel off the, the layers, you know, when you're when you're going through your deliverance process, it's a process. It doesn't just happen overnight because the devil is real. <laughs> That's one thing I say all the time. The devil is real. And the I don't like that whole thing. The struggle is real. But the devil is real. And we still um, got to go through taking some layers off of the things that the Lord has delivered us from. <clears throat> and so we went through the spiritual maturity on last week. And so this week, I'm going to share five reasons why you should not suffer in silence. I've seen uh, many people struggling and trying to go through uh, life with the Colgate smile. Mm -hmm. The Colgate smile is putting on that smile when you don't feel like smiling. We say faking it until we make it. But sometimes we never even make it because we've been faking it for so long. We become professional fakers. So we don't want to uh, remain in the faking it mode. We want to be authentic in who we are and walk in the peace that the Lord has ordained for us. So we don't want to suffer in silence because what happens when you suffer in silence? It is a silent death. It's a silent death when you suffer in silence. So I'm going to share five things that I believe um, we should do in order to not suffer in silence. Number one, when you suffer in silence, it prolongs your suffering. You are less likely to get the help you need if you withhold vital information such as symptoms 
or concerns that you may have. If you know that you are, um, you know, having heart palpitations when you get anxious about certain subjects or when you're triggered by certain things um, and you have concerns, even with the pandemic that we're still yet in, COVID is still yet here, y'all. We are still, some of us are still in quarantine. Some of us are still staying away from social gatherings. Uh, what anxiety uh, do you get when you feel that way? What concerns do you have when things um, come up in your in your members, in your in your flesh that you know, you know, I've never been a smoker. So what happens when the urge come? Now I I used to be addicted to porn. Thank God I've been delivered from that. But when something happens and triggers in, in my mind to say, oh, look at so-and-so and so, what what do I need to talk about it? You know, I can just say, I, now I'm in a place I can just say, devil, you're a liar. Like the word of God in 2 Timothy says, flee from youthful lust. Man, I'm 57 now. I, I, I don't need to be dealing with stuff I dealt with in my when I was 20, when I was 30. I'm mature in the word. Um, Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. When the Lord went through what he went through, when Jesus Christ went through what he went through to take our sins on the cross with him, I reckon the sufferings of this present time cannot even be compared to what Jesus Christ went through for us. So don't don't carry it. Don't prolong your healing by keeping it to yourself and not sharing what you got going on with other people. So don't prolong sharing uh, because the longer you keep it in, the longer your suffering will last. Number two, it is not being true to yourself. You owe it to yourself to acknowledge what is going on and find the courage to ask for help from people you trust. From people you trust. We know the Bible says put your trust in no man. Put your trust in him. But again, the Holy Spirit uses people. The Lord uses people because he is not literally walking this earth. He's using us to spread his word, to spread his gospel. Romans 8 and 30 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. He loves us and we are more than conquerors. Get the courage. Don't be ashamed. We are no longer living in condemnation. No, we are not living in condemnation. I am not being held bound by the, the two marriages that I had or the life that I had before I came into the true word of God. You need to be true to yourself. If you know you're struggling in the area, if you know you, you have the spirit of heaviness on you and you have thoughts of suicide, for God's sake, reach out to someone. Go to um, a counseling. Again, if you are part of a corporation that offers um, employee assistance, go there. If you have insurance that pays for you to go see a psychologist or psychiatrist, I had to go and my insurance paid for it. Do not ever feel ashamed of having to offer um, to be asked um, for help, to ask for help. Don't ever feel ashamed because we want to stay delivered, y'all. We want to stay delivered. Yes, and, and as we work through that process, we cannot do it alone. We cannot suffer in silence. And if, you, if you're around people who are suppressing you, who are keeping you bound, who's keeping your mouth shut, telling you, you better not tell anybody. I've been there too. What happens in this house stays in this house. Oh, absolutely not. I am sharing it with everybody and I'm letting the world know. <laughs> Look, I need help. Lord, help me, Jesus. You know, I thank God for my music uh, instructor. Miss Lejeune, man, I would go over to her house. This has been, oh God, maybe 22, 23 years ago. I would go over her house for music theory. And there were some days I I never touched the piano. 
I just sat on her couch and she would play um, Bishop T.D. Jakes for me. And I would just pour my heart out to her. And she was my confidant. She was my safe place where I could share my pain and share my suffering. And I thank God for her today. Number three, it highlights your isolation. When you stay silent, it highlights your isolation. Secluding yourself from those who can help you may be your preference, but it is not in your best interest. Wow. James 5 and 16 says, therefore, make it your habit to confess your sins to one another and to pray for one another so that you may be healed, that your that the prayer of your righteousness, the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Find yourself a prayer warrior. Find yourself that you know can get a prayer through. I had a sister call me just this week. Like, Sister Lisa, I need you to touch and agree with me on this matter. I can't do this by myself. You know, yes, I know how to pray, but I need I need to touch and agree. The, Holy, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, touching and agreeing. Mm -hmm. Touching and agreeing. It shall be done. So what we need to do is to, again, find that person who you can touch and agree with. You know, this part of, of my deliverance is still a struggle for me. I'm, I'm still finding myself being pulled to, to him, pulled to that bad relationship, pulled to that bad, um, toxic friendship. You know, I'm still struggling with unforgiveness. I'm still struggling with finding a place in my heart to even love myself. I'm still struggling in that area. Can you please touch and agree with me as the Lord continue to heal me? Ah, as the Lord continue to show me that I am value. I am of value. I am his tabernacle. Can you please touch and agree with me? Can I help me exercise my faith. Y'all know I work out and, and it's, I can do 25 reps with five pounds and feel the same effect as if I was lifting 15 pounds and only doing 10. I got to exercise it. I got to exercise it. We're exercising the measure of faith that the Lord has already given us. You got to touch and agree with someone whose faith is stronger than yours. They've been working out a little longer than you. You want to get stronger? Don't work out with someone that's on your level. If you want to get stronger, you need to connect with somebody who's already there, who's going to push you to be better, who's going to demand that you get down and you you do some push-ups, who's going to demand that you call them in the morning. Hey, sis, we got to pray. Hey, sis, we got to study the word together. Who's going to demand that out of you? Don't connect yourself with someone who's going to help you stay where you are. Because what? We want to go higher and higher levels and levels. Higher and higher in the word. Higher and higher in our faith. Yes. ah, We want to go higher in the Lord. You got to connect with people who are strong in the faith. Iron sharpeth iron. Yes. Number four. It intensifies your negative thoughts. The less you let others know how you feel, feel the more likely you are to, um, to marinate and allow your inner critical voice to spin out of control in your head. When you talk to yourself and you answer yourself, that's craziness. When you suffer in silence, you rehearse that thing over and over and over. You regurgitate it over and over and over. And your spirit, your soul literally becomes vexed with that thing. It becomes vexed and it's hard to break it. It's hard to break it when you sit in the dark in a corner and the only thing you can do is he did this to me or she did this to me or they won't let me do this and they won't let me do that. I'm no good. Nobody loves me. Nobody wants me. 
I've been there before. Yes, I've been there before. But you know what? I found myself crawling to my freedom. I found myself connecting with the sister who was praying for me and with me. And God brought me out of that thing, y'all. I'm telling you, God brought me out of that pit. And he can bring you out of that pit. Yes, he can bring you out of that pit. We don't have to be in the pit. Come out of the pit. Because the more you think about what's going on with you, the more your mind is just going to deteriorate. And your spirit is going to deteriorate. We want to be Oh, y'all, 1 Timothy 5 and 7, 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. There is this saying, if you're going to worry, why pray? So if you're praying, don't worry. Don't worry if you're praying. Worrying is a sign of unbelief. Worrying is a sign that you don't believe God when you worry. Yes, you can be concerned, but worrying is when you, again, rehearsing that thing over and over and over. And where is your faith? And sometimes you just got to cut your losses and say, okay, this is it. I, I'm not going to invest any more into this situation. I'm not going to invest any more into trying to be something or to become something God did not ordain me to be. You just got to accept it. This is it. This is what this is what it's going to be. In order for me to live a whole and complete life full of injury and illnesses and prosper, I'm going to have to let this one go. Turn away, close the book, lock the key, throw it away and live. Number 1, it prolongs your suffering when you suffer in silence. It prolongs your suffering. You need to ask for help. Number two, it is not being true to yourself. You owe it to yourself to acknowledge what is going on and find the courage to ask for help. Number three, it highlights your isolation when you're suffering, secluding yourself from those who can help you. Mm -hmm. Maybe what you like to do, but it is not in your best interest. Number four, it intensifies the negative thoughts. When you sit in the corner and you continue to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse what is happening to you or what has happened. And number five, it heightens your mistaken belief that no one can help you and that you are alone in this battle. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is not true. Second Chronicles 20 and 15 says, and he said, hearken ye all Judah. And we know Judah means praise and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. When we release it and we turn it over to him and we step back and we allow the Lord to do what he does best, and that's fight. <laughs> he, he fights the battles for us. Yes, you need to gird yourself up. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put put on your, um, the, your feet. Be ready. Get your arsenal those that fight in the army or the armed forces, they train every day for battle. But are we in war every day? No, we're not in war every day. But guess what? They got their gear on. Their mindset is ready to fight when the, when the alarm comes from the generals. Hey, it's time to go. Suit up. Be ready. But guess what? We're going to be on the front line, but we're not going to have to pull out a gun. We're not going to have to pull out a grenade. We're not going to we're not going to have to stand behind the sandbags because the Lord has it for us. He's fighting the battle and you are worth it. You are not alone in this thing, y'all. And I think once we get to a place understanding you are not alone. 
you have someone there for you who's praying for you, who's rooting for you. You got cheerleaders out here who wants to see you succeed in whatever it is you want to do in life, whatever it is, just in life itself, getting up every day, being excited about what is to come. You got people out here rooting for you. God wants you whole abstain from the very appearance of bad people stay from bad people <laughs> and stay in the lord not to be so heavenly minded that you know earthly good i'm not saying that but i'm saying surround yourself around good stuff around good people yes it heightens your mistaken belief that no one can help you and that you are alone in this world the battle is not ours, y'all. It's the Lord's to fight. It's not ours to fight. Let's go back over them. Number one, it prolongs your suffering when you suffer in silence. It prolongs your suffering. Do not suffer alone. Do not suffer alone. Romans 8 and 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The Lord has gone through, Jesus Christ has gone through a lot of stuff for us. Cast it. Cast it on him. Number two, it is, it is not being true to who you are. You owe it to yourself to acknowledge what is going on and find the courage to ask for help from people you trust. Romans 8 and 37 says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Number three, it heightens your isolation when you suffer in silence. Secluding yourself from those who can help you may be your preference, but it is not in your best interest. James 5 and 16 says, therefore, make it your habit to confess your sins to one another and to pray for one another so that you may be healed the prayers of a righteous person is powerful and effective number four it intensifies your negative thoughts the less you let others know how you feel the more likely you are you are to marinate and allow your inner critical voice to spin out of control in your head First Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And finally, number five, it heightens your mistaken belief that no one can help you and that you are alone in this battle. And we know that is a lie from the pit of hell. Second Chronicles 20 and 15 says, and he says, hearken ye all Judah, all praise. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. I pray this was helpful to you, that you will find it in yourself, the courage to know that you are worthy of a life free from injury and illness and walk in the prosperity that the Lord has for you. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for this day, oh God. We honor your name. We thank you for this time of sharing. We thank you for this time of seeking your face. We thank you for the word that has come to bring light into our souls. Letting us know that we are important first to you and that we are important to ourselves. Let us connect ourselves with people who has our best interest at heart, who wants to see us grow and to be free and to live a complete life free from injury or illnesses. We ask that you bless us for the rest of the week. Allow your Holy Spirit just to shine and resonate so people will see how good you are to us and that would cause them to want to know who you are even the more. In Jesus' name, we pray, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. 
Now you go make a wonderful day. And as I always say, a centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Finding Peace Within podcast with Lisa L. Dalton. Now remember, you can always connect with me on social media. Facebook under Lisa Dalton. Twitter at I am Lisa L. Dalton. Instagram, Lisa.Dalton. And LinkedIn, Lisa L. Dalton. Visit my website, FindingPeaceWithin.org, where you can read some of my blogs, Find the books that I've written, listen to previous podcasts, and even some of the workout videos that I've created. Until next time, remember to find peace within. A centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed.